So, you want to know about particles. Well, part of this is about the equals, and part of it is, um, yeah, I tried to break the words there, but the thing, equals isn't a word, so it doesn't really make sense. Hey guys, welcome back to Touch by Kai, I'm Kai, and today we're back once again, taking a look at, uh, everything you're gonna really need to know about particles, so kind of all about particles in this, uh, video, um, and the cool thing is, is that, uh, there's a lot you can do with particles, so let's go ahead and delete default cube, hit delete key, the delete key, sorry, I'm also gonna de delete the lamp, because we don't need that right now, either, actually I'm gonna leave the lamp, we'll leave it, um, so what we're gonna do, is I'm gonna hit shift A, and we're gonna search for a plane, and this plane, um, is gonna be scaled up a little bit, so we hit S on your keyboard, we can scale that plane up a little bit, something like that, just so we have a place where the, the particles can come out of. So we're going to use this plane as basically like an emitter. So th this is what's going to make the particles actually be able to come out of something. So I'm going to go ahead and hit uh, G, Z to move this straight up. So now you can see that it's up there. It's kind of like, um, pretend this is like the shower head. You know, it's going to just like fall, and then like rain's going to fall down or water's going to fall down, whatever it is, you know what I mean? So I'm going to go ahead and go to the particle tab, which is this tab right here on the right hand side. Hit this little plus button right there on the right hand side as well. And now we have a bunch of different options under this emission um, little branch that's kind of open when we first come in here. So we have the number, the seed, frame, start, in, lifetime, and lifetime, random, and the source. Which we're not really going to use source that much, so don't worry about that. Um, I'm going to open up the timer a little bit. And we're going to change my start frame to, uh, we'll leave it on one. So if I play this, you can see that there's now going to be particles that fall out of this plane and uh they're gonna they kind of they kind of stop right there as you can see kind of like a weird spot for them to end but you can see they play until they get to the end frame which is 200 and then they stop right here and they don't stop emitting after this point right here um so that's basically like the the basic of particles now if we render this you won't be able to see anything because uh, these these little balls that are falling we call these halos and these you're not able to see anything with these at all um, they're just there as like basically markers for us to see what the particles are moving like. We can't see this if you render it, so you won't see anything with these default things. You have to change them, which we'll do in a moment. Um, so for the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, I'm gonna change the number of particles. We can change it to 10,000, so we'll obviously have 10 times more particles than what we just had. So it's obviously a lot more. Um, you can have as many particles as you want, but just keep in mind the more you have, the more lag you're gonna get in your system, depending on how good it is. So I have 100,000 particles insane amount of particles you're never probably gonna need as many um for most things you do but 100,000 particles there you go you can also do a million which i'm not gonna do because that will crash the system um we're gonna go ahead and put this back we can put it down to 10 as well so you can have 10 uh particles so if i play this you can see there you go it will play it'll, it will it will give you 10 particles over the, the course of 200 frames and then it'll stop right there um there you go so i'm gonna put it back down to a thousand for now um and what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we can change the seed so it'll, it'll make it like uh, spawn in different areas and it'll be more random. Put it on five for now, I guess. Um, we can change the start frame and the end frame. So I'm gonna change the end frame to 50. So basically what this means is that from one, from frame one to frame 50, it'll play all of the 1,000 particles and then it'll stop. So it'll be much more condensed. Like it'll be much more like packed in there instead of like them all being at the same time. So like, I, put the start, like, I put the start frame on one and I put the end frame on five and only the first five frames are the only frames that all the particles are going to come out in. So that's a thousand particles just like kind of just booped out right there and just like falling out of this thing at the same time because there's like not not enough time for them to slowly drip out. Um, so put my end frame back on 200. The lifetime, you can see what this basically means is they will only be alive for 50 frames. So that's why they're dying right here. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this up to 200 because our end frame is 200. So we're going we're gonna to make these live for 200 frames. So they will fall down and down and down and down and down until frame 200 right now. And they're going to die. You can see. So they die way down here now because we have that on frame 200. So obviously you're going to want to up that every single time or unless you want your particles to instantly die like if you have them on frame 10. So they only last for 10 frames and then they'll die. So that's basically, yeah, <laughs> like that. But um. But yeah, so we have that uh, that ability as well. So I'm going to put this back on 200. Lifetime randomness basically means that so that you see how when they end, let me put this not on 200 then. You see how when they end, um, when they die, it kind of like um, just has this like harsh line as you can tell where it ends. If I turn lifetime randomness up, then they'll kind of die around that area and they won't all die at the same time. You see now they're kind of dying, you know, before, up here, some are dying. Those like they'll, It'll kind of like spread it out a little bit, which means you're going to turn your end frame, uh, your lifetime end frame up. So 
Uh, you have, they, have, they have more room to fall now because the lifetime is, is higher. So you can see, like, it kind of staggers off a little bit. You know what I mean? They don't all die at the same place. So it's kind of like getting thinner and thinner and thinner as it goes down. Um, so that's basically uh, lifetime randomness. Now, the source, you're not, not going to mess around with this too much. The only thing you would mess around with would probably be distribution, um, uh, which is jittered, random, or grid. So jittered basically means it's, like, more random, uh, more, uh, more like, on some of the the okay so if i go back to back up here you can see the seed right if i change the seed you see where some of these are starting to fall so if i change it they'll fall in different areas right so it's obviously different every time that's basically what the seed is jittered basically just it's not really exactly random but it's just like in a jittery kind of formation random is like super random and it'll just like be anywhere wherever all over the uh face of the plane um in just any fashion whatsoever and then of course grid is it will fall only on the grid which is basically like as you can see it just go up and down like that straight across the uh the lines um so that's basically that now um i recommend just using jitter to random um because they're basically the same thing like I said you emit from faces or vertices so it'll only emit from the vertices um I'm not going to use or use these so you just might as well just leave them the way that they are um, down to velocity, you know, real quickly, you can see that you can make it go faster by if you turn the normal up, you, they can fall faster. Um, as you see, they are now kind of falling faster and, and, and kind of having a whole big thing. The thing is, when you have a plane, when you eat, when you make this plane, the it's facing up when you when you add it in so basically what the particles are doing is that they're going up and then falling down so to fix this we have with our plane so that we hit rx and then hit 180 so you flip it upside down completely um oh, 180 nope i missed rx and then 180 and then it enters so now they're basically just falling down instead of going up and then coming down so now they're just straight on falling down turn the normal up some more and now we can make them shoot out really fast um because our velocity is higher which is really cool you can turn randomize up as well which makes them kind of shoot out more random um if i go ahead and put this back on one you can see they kind of just like woo, all over the place now instead of just straight falling down like like this you can see if i turn the random up they'll kind of just go all over the place which is very nice which is very good depending on what you're using and what you're trying to make so i just leave that on, like on a, on a lower value i think looks really good so something like one i think looks uh pretty decent for the random yeah, no, that's good, depending on what you're doing. Um, so it's not just like a straight, like it doesn't go straight down. There's like pieces that come out a little bit. But yeah, so I'm, I'm mainly in both of those, both of those on one. Um, and then rotation, you're not really going to use this too much, depending on what your objects that you're rotating, that, that you're emitting are. We'll get to that in a moment. Um, physics, uh, this is really good, depending on what you're doing as well. Um, you only basically all this alone. What you're going to really want to focus on is the re these three values. Um, so Brownian is kind of like... The best way to describe it is like, you know what um, uh, insects look like when they fly? It kind of looks like this. And you won't be able to see it until I turn the gravity off. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. Let's go ahead and turn the field weights gravity down. So now instead of them falling down, they will kind of just like sit there and not do anything. As you can see, they're kind of just floating around. Now, the cool thing is, is that if I turn on Brownian, you can see they kind of start flying around like bugs or flies. Um, you can see, there you go. So they kind of like... I go around and like gnats or flies or something. Let me turn the uh, random on the velocity down um, to zero. All right, cool. So now you can see this is what Brownian kind of does. It kind of makes them like float around and, and do some kind of cool thing. So if I turn it off all the way, um, you can see that it looks like uh, looks like this, right? They just kind of come out and just go down and whatnot. If I turn this up a little bit, you can see they kind of like start looking like gnats or flies or something, which is really nice. Um, so I usually have this on a low value, something like um, two or five or something, just so I have a little bit of movement, as you can see, which looks really cool. And the damp, the damp is really good because it makes them basically stay where they are, essentially. Let me turn the um, lifetime randomness down. All right, cool. So you can see basically it just makes them kind of stay where they are, um, uh, the damp. Now, a little goes a long way, so... If I have this on 0 0.05, you can see they kind of slowly just go down a little bit and then kind of stay where they are after that. Um, and then the brownie and kind of makes them like hover and float around a little bit and do this like weird little like motion thing, which looks really cool. So like I said, also dependent on what you're doing, looks really cool. We can turn the gravity back up and they will fall, of course. Um, but yeah, so I really enjoy the brownie and that looks really cool. I've always liked you messing around with that. But like I said, the, the damp goes a long, a little tiny bit goes a long way. So 0 0.05. Two is is like good. Point zero two is 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 good. 
um but yeah so that's it for physics basically render is the big the big thing basically the last thing you're really going to want to mess around with too much um uh the render as this is what we need so if i go ahead and add in an object let me add in a monkey let's add a monkey and let's move it up here so you can't see it uh, let's select our plane again and then go back to render you can change render to render as object and then select an instance object and we're going to select suzanne which is the monkey so now our particles are the monkey which is cool but now as you can see they're all facing the same way they're all facing to the right hand side let me actually make this um uh easier to see so um they're all facing to the right hand side now if i change the scale we can change them up so that they're bigger so that's easier to see and we also change the scale randomness so some of them are small and some of them are big so i'm going to put that up a little bit not all the way just a little bit just there's a little bit of variation um but you can see they're all facing the the the, the, the right way like to the right um now we can go ahead and select the monkey and rotate the monkey you know what i mean but it's not doing anything like i can rotate the monkey all i want to but it is not affecting those at all and the reason is because we don't have the rotation set so if i go ahead and go down here to instance object and hit object rotation you can see they instantly flip to the direction that suzanne is facing which is to the back obviously because suzanne's facing to the back behind us um now if i go ahead and grab suzanne again and rotate her you can see all the monkey heads rotate as well see if i rotate everything then the monkey heads will rotate depending on whatever direction she is facing now if i want this to be more random we can go ahead and check rotation and as you can see some of them are rotated uh well all of them are rotated now a different uh, a different direction N not correlating to the direction our actual monkey is facing that be that's because this is um overriding this object rotation thing right here so let's uncheck the object rotation so now you can see they're kind of facing upwards now and uh, open up rotation and you can hit dynamic and now when you hit dynamic you can see they will move and jitter around obviously kind of kind of weird um but we can fix this by changing the uh the phase we'll turn the phase up a little bit so they move they rotate they rotate a little bit more um we can turn the randomize up a little bit so that's a little bit more random and the uh, the randomize phase there you go so you have all this now the browning is kind of making them uh kind of kind of uh act a bit weird so let's turn that down a little bit to um maybe a lower value something like that just so there's a little tiny bit of movement um there we go something like that i suppose looks pretty good um now we're going to turn up the in the velocity we'll turn the random up a little bit more so they move a little tiny bit more um in a random kind of area almost up to one not all the way up to one and we're gonna turn the damp down as well because 0.02 is still too much they're kind of just like there we go i want them to float a little bit and turn a little tiny bit of gravity back on just a little bit a little also goes a long way with this so cool you can see let's go back up to um rotation all right now with rotation we have one last thing the angular velocity this is the thing that's going to really actually rotate them properly like and let them rotate around so if i turn the amount up you can see that they will now spin the way that they they, they should be um, i'm going to turn the the damp back up why, why, what am I, what am I doing? Um, the, let me turn, let me turn the gravity off. Let's turn the gravity, the gravity off. So there we go. So you can see now they're rotating, um, a little bit more like, like actually fully. They're actually rotating now, like spinning and moving around, which looks really cool. Um, but yeah, that's basically that. So the, 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 the amount, obviously you can turn it up. It's going to spin faster. If you turn it down, it's going to spin less fast. Um, but yeah, for now, we'll just leave it on like a 1.5 and you can see that that is the rotation of all the particles there. Let's go ahead and actually, um, hit subdivision, uh, uh, uh smooth on our monkey. So, uh, object smooth. So now they're, they're all smooth and they will all reflect that as well. We can also put a subdivision surface on the monkey, um, which might not be the smartest thing to do. Actually, well, let's actually, um, put this above that. So let's grab this and move it above the particle system. Um, actually, wait, my Suzanne, there we go. Let's select Suzanne, and then we'll put the subdivision surface on. Okay, cool. There we go. Um, so now they're a bit smoother, and they're they're uh, uh, looking good. So that's basically everything for particles. Now, one last quick thing I will talk about is groups, because they're very important if you want multiple colors in different particles. So let's go to the material tab real quick, so you can see all the materials are exactly the same, because there's only one monkey. Um, I'm going to make this monkey blue. So let's add a material, make it blue, and now you can see all the monkeys are blue. Maybe you want multicolored monkeys. Of course, you just want those, you know, uh, Skittle flavor uh, monkeys. Yeah, that's what, that's what it is. So we'll go ahead and hit Shift D to duplicate the monkey. I'm going to move over here. Um, Shift D to duplicate the monkey like this. So now you have two monkeys. Now what we need to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call this one blue. And oh, we're going to call this one 
right this little two button button right here and then we're gonna call this one green um, and we're gonna change this to a green color so now you can see all of them cha have changed to green um, but that's okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna select the green monkey hold on shift select the blue monkey actually I'm gonna, I'm gonna make one more we'll make one more one more one more hit this little two button and we'll make red um there we go and we'll change this to a red color all right yeah nice 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 okay so we'll select hold down shift select the red one the blue one and the green one uh hit control l and then uh bu -bu 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 link collection we're gonna go ahead and that now they have all uh they made a collection together we can hit m i'm actually gonna do this way instead hit m new collection and then we'll call this collection particles there we go um, but yeah, so we didn't need to link the collection. We just need to make one. <laughs> all right. So we're going to add and like, we have all these three now in a collection over here that is called particles, as you can see. So now, um, we can call this anything we want, but I'm going to leave it called particles. We have all three of these right here. Um, what we're going to do is I'm going to select the plane. Once again, go to the particle tab, go down to do, 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 render, and then change this from instance, uh, render as object. We're going to change this to collection. And then we're going to select the instance collection that we've created called particles. And now you can see we have red, green, and blue particles that are now working very cool. We can change the um, we can change the use count so we can uh, uh, have one have one uh, one of these monkeys be more prevalent than the other ones. We have more red or more green or more blue or whatever. Um, we can hit object rotation, which we don't really need to do. Um, we can do pick random so that they're more random, which I will do. Um, and we can use also whole collection, which means all three of them are going to be used as one particle instead of, uh, yeah, so definitely don't check that. Um, but yeah, so you can see that that is basically how you have multicolored particles. That's how you do other particles is how you do everything. But yeah, I hope you ladies and gentlemen enjoyed it. I will see you in the next one, but until then, bye-bye.